Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Seema and I'm here to share some of my watercolor tips and techniques with you. Today I'm going to show you how to paint a rose using a tri wedge brush. So here are the art supplies that I'll be using today. Let's start with the watercolors. These colors are from King Art brand and I'll be mostly using a combination of the greens. And this palette is from Industria My Mary. I'll be using a combination of this uh, intense pinkish purple color called Resina Violet and a little reddish looking color called Permanent Matter Deep. And the pink and the red are for the roses and the greens are for the leaves. This is a hooker's green, sap green and a viridian green. Next, we come to the paper. I'm using a four and a half by six inches gold pressed watercolor paper from Canson. I'll be using this tri witch brush to paint the roses and this round brush to paint the leaves. Both these brushes are also from the King Art brand. I'll leave a link to all these art supplies in the description below. And of course, don't forget some clean water and paper towels. Let's take a closer look at this tri witch brush. It has three sides, side one, side two, and side three. This is what it looks like from the side with a very pointy tip and a slight curve right behind. And this is what is going to help us create those rose petals. As you know, the rose petals are arranged in a circle. So I'm gonna create some C shapes from the center outwards and keep adding more to create the rose. Now I'm going to show you how to create these C shapes. Let's first practice the C's in the center, which are the easiest because they're very small and tiny. And uh, I use the tip of my brush to paint these small C's. And as we move outwards, our C's become larger and thicker. Let's start practicing these larger petals. For this shape, place the tip of the brush at an angle like this and drag the belly of the brush and gradually lift up the brush to create this tapered end. For this petal, I'm going to move my hand to the side and repeat the technique. For a petal arranged like this, you can use one of two ways. One way is placing the tip of the brush like this and dragging and lifting the brush. Or you can rotate the paper and repeat the technique. This petal can also be created in two ways, either by moving my hand to one side and using the technique to create the petal, or by rotating the paper. As we move outwards from the center, our petals are going to get thicker. So to create these petals, start with the tip of the brush and drag a larger part of the bed. Add a darker value of the color to the inner side of the petals to create a shadow. Now that we have practiced all the techniques, we are ready to paint the rose. So I'm going to draw two circles for the roses. This rose is going to face forward. So I will draw a small circle right in the middle of the rose. Now this rose is going to face in the other direction. So the center will not be in the middle, but to one side. Now let's get some leaves and maybe a bud. I'm going to begin by picking a combination of these two colors. 
and then start painting some small seas in the center and larger seas as we work our way outwards. At this point, I'm going to clean up my brush and use that brush to drag some color out to create more petals. Add some color to the petals while they are still wet. This will keep your petals from looking too washed out and pale. Also, as you add more petals to the rose, remember to leave a little white between the petals. Rotating the paper will help you create the petals more easily and achieve the overall roundness. Remember to paint your petals a little larger as you move outwards. Now since the rose looks a little uneven here, I'm going to add more petals. Every now and then run a clean brush on the petals and add more color. This helps the color blend, otherwise the color is just going to sit on your petals and look like a blob. This completes our first rows. Let's work on the next rows. Start with tiny seeds in the center and work slowly around the rows to achieve that roundness. You can erase or lighten some of the pencil marks. This finishes our second rose. Next, I'm going to start working on this bud. I'm going to start with small C's and follow the shape of the bud. I won't be adding too many petals since this is only a bud. So there may be one or two petals. And I'm going to finish the rest of the bud using a clean brush. Let's start painting the leaves. I'm going to pick up some hookers green and mix a little black to it and then paint the sepals on the bud using the tip of my tri edge brush. Now for the leaves, I'm going to use various combinations of sap green, hookers green, viridian, mix in a little black and just vary the colors to create these leaves. Try not to paint the entire leaf using just one color. Add water to create the transparent effect. And using a dark green or black, create some jacket edges.
Now it's time to work on the background. For this, you need to replace your water and get some clean water. I'm going to wet my brush and run it in the space around and between the leaves. There may or may not be a little bit of bleeding from the leaves, but they are still wet. Finally, it's time to add some splatters. Let's add one last bit of detail. I'm going to use my dry wedge brush to add some fine veins to these leaves. So I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial. If you did, please consider subscribing to my channel so that I can continue to share and create more videos like this for you in the future. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.